Alright guys, welcome to my uh, brief tutorial on how to stream Vindictus using Streamlabs OBS to Twitch. Um, so if you take a look here, the first thing that we have to do is uh, go ahead and make a Twitch account. Um, just follow this link and then uh, in the top right corner you'll have a sign up. Go ahead and sign up. You guys know the drill. Make your account. And once you've made your account, go ahead and log in. And then uh, once you've logged in, you can click on the top here, go to your dashboard, and it'll load this screen. So go ahead and save this. And then uh, the next thing you guys got to do is uh, go ahead and download Streamlabs OBS. So uh, if you haven't downloaded Streamlabs OBS, I will kindly ask you guys to use this link right here. It's pasted in the video description underneath. So let's go ahead and open that up so you guys know what it looks like. Um, you don't have to log in or anything. Just go ahead and download it. Uh, and then install. Once you've installed it, boot it up. Um, I'll be working with Narxena bot here, uh, which means that this will be like a fresh run through. Uh, I don't have any scenes set up, I have no sources, none of my settings are made. So go ahead and log in um, with that account that you just made. So uh, just so you guys know, Narxena bot is my. Uh, my automatic Twitch responding bot for when I stream. Um, so as you can see I have no scenes. I have the basic default which is just scenes. We go ahead and open it up. So now that we're here, um, the first thing we want to do is go ahead and make sure that we can find our source. So I have Vindictus booted up in the background here and um, I found that the easiest way to get this to work is if you go to options, set it to full screen resolution, and then for your settings, you can go ahead and use whatever settings make your client run as smooth as possible. Uh, in my case, I have a 1070, so these are the settings that I use. Uh, feel free to either copy these if you have a similar card. Uh, if you have a card that's older, um, you can mess around with some of these. Um, I've noticed that the better CPU that you have, uh, these settings on the top tend to affect your frames more. And then the better your GPU is, these two especially will change how many frames you get. Um, Vindictus is a pretty CPU intensive game so that's just something to keep in mind. So go ahead and finish all of that up and then let's just leave this client running right here. As you can see it's running at 60. I'm, s I'm good with that. So let's switch back to Streamlabs OBS. So let's go ahead and add the source. So if you click on the plus sign, sorry, right here, add a new source, it'll open up this window. Now Instinctively, you would think you would want to go to Game Capture. However, for Vindictus, that is not correct. You want to go to Window Capture and uh, add a source. We'll name this Vindictus. Then we go ahead and select the window that we want to show on the stream. So we'll go down and find the Vindictus.exe and voila. Um, I always set this to uh, window window title must match so it doesn't accidentally capture anything else even though the chances of me running anything else named Vindictus at the same time are slim to none. Um, and then for those of you that want to capture your cursor while you're in game uh, go ahead and mark this if not uncheck it and then don't worry about multi adapter compatibility. Go ahead and click done and there you go so that's your Vindictus client. You have it set up and this is what you want to show. Now let's say I'm logging in and I click start game um, and I don't want you guys to see what my, uh, what my secondary password is. So what you can do is you can go ahead and add a new scene, block secondary. So all of a sudden I have a black screen. Now black screens aren't fun so something that you can consider to do is let's say you can add a image source. Um, so let's go ahead and see if I can find something here. Uh, block chat, let's call it, add a new source, and then browse. Um, so this is my stream folder right here. Let's just use this one. Voila. So now when I'm streaming, I can just switch between the two scenes. I have one that's showing my Vindictus client and one that shows an offline screen. So while this one is open, I can still go to my Vindictus and do everything. It just won't show up on the stream. All you guys will see is this. Whereas if I go here, and then I do stuff, it'll show up on the stream. So that's how you set up the basics. From here, you can add a whole bunch of widgets. Um, so widgets are located here. Al alert box is very important. 
So adding an alert box, uh, you guys on your own time can figure out what you want to name your alerts and stuff. Um, I'm not going to go into that, but you can put this alert box where you like it. Most people just leave it in the center. I've seen some streamers put it offset or in the corner, um, but in the center is usually fine. Uh, once you have that set up, make sure you click lock on these so you're not messing with them. And then uh, some other things you can do is like a viewer account. You can add a source for that. Um, so as you can see, zero Twitch viewers at this point. You can set that up in the top, wherever you want. Um, some other things that people like to put are like donation goals, uh, chat boxes. So you can add a chat box source. Uh, you can always change all of these things as you like them. But that's something you can put here. Uh, and if you click on this arrow, it opens up your chat. So I can go ahead and type a testing message. As you can see, it pops up on the stream. So those are the basics. Viewer count, stream chat, and then your Vindictus client. So I'm not going to go into any more detail on putting more widgets. I am going to go ahead and show you how to set up uh, streaming to Twitch directly. So once you have your scene here set up, how you like it, uh, there's a lot of custom options that you can do. Go ahead and click this setting button up in the top corner. and It'll open up this window for you. So now, this first general window, you can actually kind of ignore. Um, the only things that's important is if you want to record your streams, you can uh, set it to automatically record when streaming. And if you want to keep recording after you stop, you can also mark that. Um, I use that sometimes when I want to record streams, but usually I don't. Uh, and then for your stream, now this is the cool thing. By using Streamlabs OBS, it'll actually set up your Twitch key. Uh, without you having to do anything, as long as you log in and authorize your account. So earlier when I logged into Narxena Bot, it asked me to authorize my account for Streamlabs, and as soon as I clicked OK, I was good to go. So you can switch between Twitch, YouTube Gaming, and all of these other things that nobody uses. Um, for server, click it on Auto. Uh, depending on where you live, you can manually select something if you want, and then you have your stream key. Now let's say uh, you didn't automatically do this and your stream key needed to be put in. So let's go ahead and open up our window browser here. Do you guys remember this? So if we go to your dashboard, it'll open up this window. And if you go down to channel, this is your stream key. I'm not going to show my stream key, but you can copy it. All you got to do is paste it and click done. And then you're done. Um, next thing you want to do is check your output. Now when you guys start this, it'll be in simple mode. Okay. Now, simple mode is great and all, but going to advanced gives you a little bit more freedom as to what you want to do. I leave audio track as one because I don't split my audio tracks, but let's say you want to listen to music that's different than the music that you're streaming because of royalty issues and whatnot. You can set different audio tracks to be sent to your stream and they can be different than what you're listening to, so that way you can listen to your dope music that's copyright while everybody else listens to like piano music. Um, your encoder, uh, this can be tricky. If you have a really strong CPU, you can use software times 264. Um, I use my GPU because Vindictus is a CPU intensive game and it's not very draining on your GPU. So I go ahead and select NVENC, which is an option only available to NVIDIA cards. So GeForce, uh, I have a 1070, so that's what I use. Uh, if you have a, a Radeon card, um, there'll be an AMD option that you can use. Um, I don't have personal experience on how well those work in terms of encoding, but I've heard good things, so you can give that a shot. Um, as for the next part, um, if you want to simplify your bitrate and all of that, you can just enforce streaming service encoder settings, but that's lame, and I'm going to show you guys how to mess around with that. First thing you want to do is go ahead and click Rescale Output. Now the reason you want to rescale your output is, let's say, your internet can't upload 1080p all the time um, because it messes with your hosting or your battles or you lag. You can switch that to 720. So all of a sudden, even if you're playing in 1080, the stream will only upload 720, which is considerably easier to do. Uh, I'm going to leave it on 1080, of course. Uh, for rate control, leave it on CBR. For bitrate, uh, this is tricky. So Twitch actually says that 3500 is the 
ideal because most people that watch Twitch they averaged what their download speed was and most of them can only stream and watch if it's a 3500 bit rate. Um, in my case um, I use transcoding so that allows me to have several options of 1080p, 720p, 480p um, offered on Twitch where each of them has lower bit rates than previous options to uh, allow a broader audience to view my stream content. Um, personally, I go to 6,000. Um, as a Twitch affiliate, you can go up to about 8,000 before they get mad, um, depending on how many people are streaming on Twitch at that time. So early in the morning, you can do 8,000. In the evening, I would say 6,000 is probably your best bet. Um, if you're a Twitch partner, you could easily go up to 10,000, uh, depending on your contract with Twitch. So your quality really depends on how much you can get out. So we're going to go ahead and do 6,000. Keyframe interval, just leave it at zero, don't worry about it. Preset, high, preset I use high quality because I have a 1070. Um, if you have a lower performance card, like let's say you have a laptop with a 950M, you can use high performance and that can save you some, uh, some frames and make your gameplay smoother while you're streaming. Uh, sure, your stream won't look as good, but at the same time, um, having a laggy stream with really shitty gameplay probably isn't going to be great. For your profile, you can select main. Um, for level, you can go with auto, don't worry about it. And then always use your two-pass encoding. This, uh, this makes your content considerably nicer to look at. Um, of course, if your GPU is getting taxed way too much, uh, let's say you have an older card that's like a 7, 770 or something, um, I would consider turning it off if you're having frame issues and it's not because of your CPU. Uh, for your GPU here, most people have their have only one GPU, and you can set that as zero, because zero is your uh, your first GPU slot. If you have more than one GPU, you can set it as one, two, however many you have, whatever one you're using. Uh, if you have more than one GPU, I guess you probably already know how to do all of this stuff, so I'm not going to bother about it. Then for brief B frames, you can leave it at one. Um, the recording stuff. You guys can kind of figure it out on your own. Um, it's just selecting where you want to record it, what format, um, and that's about it. When you're streaming, you want to make sure you're using your stream encoder. Otherwise, you'll put unnecessary burden on your CPU to re-encode whatever you're streaming. Um, for your audio, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Desktop, default, mic, default, unless you have designated streaming mics or you have audio coming in from different sources, I wouldn't really mess with this. Um, for your video, uh, this part's a little tricky. If you're streaming at 720p um, and you play your game at 720p, you can change the base resolution of your canvas. Um, so as you can see like there, now I only have uh, 1280 by 720 as my canvas size. And that cuts off part of my client because my client is at 1080. But at 1080, my whole client shows. Um, your output scaled resolution, uh, you should just leave it at 1080. Um, this is for if you're making your videos, and let's say you want to make save your videos for YouTube. Uh, YouTube takes pretty high resolutions. They have 4K, so 1080 is no problem for them. Um, of course, if you're having trouble recording at 1080, then you can uh, scale it down. For your downscale filter, um, you can do sharpen scaling, 32 samples, that's the best option, um, and then you can go down as your CPU or GPU allow you to. Uh, for your FPS type, just do common FPS values, and then for your common FPS values, which are these, I would say that if you're running the game at a stable 55 frames or higher the entire time, go ahead and just select 60, don't worry about it. If you fluctuate between anywhere from like 40 frames all the way to 60, or you sometimes even dip into the high 20s or 30s, um, I would go down to 30 FPS, only because it will make your life a little bit easier and make your gameplay look a little bit smoother. It seems counterintuitive, but the thing is if you're recording at 60 frames, but you're only supplying 40 frames, there will be a couple frames here and there that are the same frame, and it will look like your stream is basically... Um, lagging I guess it just won't look smooth and that's about it uh, that's as far as settings need to go 
and then once all of that is set up the last thing you need to do is basically click the go live button um, it will open up a little dialog window you can title the stream what you want um, we can say na vindictus noxina bot test stream that's about it uh, you can use stream tags if you like um, I think English is one, right? Oh, maybe not. It's not a big deal. Uh, you can go ahead and click confirm go live. And within seconds, it will take you to the live. And now I'm recording. So at this point, um, all the messages that I post, hey, what's up, will show up on the stream. I'll have a viewer count here. And if you go ahead and look at your dashboard and go to your live window, uh, you'll see that I'm actually live. And I have only one quality option uh, because I'm not an affiliate and I don't get transcoding. Um, and that's about it. And then if you want to make sure that you're uploading well, you can always go here and check your stream health. Uh, my stream health is excellent. I've got good net. But if you're having difficulty where your bar spikes down or it's really uneven, uh, you can always lower your bit bitrate quality down to like 3500 which is the suggested or something in between whatever you need to do um, and that's about it uh, in terms of streaming to twitch um, that should get you started and if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me um, I go by Neuroxas 866 N-A-R-A-X-A-S-866 on all the discord servers and you can always reach out to me on YouTube. So if you got questions, reach out. If not, that's about it. Uh, hope you guys found this tutorial useful.